Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. We're back in the shop today working on our Invest Arms Flintlock Hawking Kit. We've accounted for all of our parts and materials. We have our tools we discussed in the last video. Today, we're going to start dry fitting all of our hardware to the stock to make sure that we have nice, tight fits with our, uh, our hardware to our stock mating before we go on to stock shaping and uh, ultimately finishing the kit. I'd like to thank muzzleloaders.com for sending me this kit. I did pay for this kit. I did receive a discount though um, for the kit that we're showing here in the video today. So what we're doing, we're following along with our instructions here that you can download from muzzleloaders.com. You wanna make sure you're downloading the right instructions for your kit. So be sure that you're downloading the instructions only, only downloading the instructions on the product page for the kit that you are building. You don't wanna be picking up a uh, the percussion lock kit instructions for a flintlock kit. So I'm here on my second page. Step two says, once all parts are accounted for, you can begin the dry fitting process. This process is crucial and will greatly improve the overall fit and finish of your kit. And I couldn't agree more on that. Uh, a lot of times you'll see folks rush into, they'll start shaping their stock and removing wood before they fit their parts. And it can end up that you have uh, you know, some issues with that. So what we wanna do here first is, is what we call dry fitting. And this means we're going to fit and make all of our hardware to our muzzleloader kit, which means we're just going to assemble the kit as it sits. It's going to be in its rough form. None of the metal is finished. None of the stock is finished. Uh, we're going to put that all together, make sure everything fits nice and snug, and uh, make the parts that don't fit snug fit snug before we move on to any cosmetic improvements. In this state, the muzzleloader will work. It will be functional. So if you have like a hunt coming up this weekend and you just got your kit, you can dry fit everything and you can take it out and you can start using it. But I don't recommend that. It won't be nearly as comfortable and look nearly as nice as a finished kit. So, uh, but that's what we're gonna start working on here today. Looks like to start, we need to inspect our lock by removing it from the stock. So to inspect our lock here, we need to remove our lock bolt here on the side plate side. I was doing that with my screwdriver and then twisting it out here with my thumb, making sure to place my lock bolt into our parts container. And that's gonna release our lock. Following the instructions here, we wanna make sure that this lock is functional in case we need to contact Invest Arms about it. So this is the internals that we have on this lock. It's gonna be a little bit different if you've seen some of the other locks that are out there. This is much more similar to something like the old Thompson Center or the CVA or the Traditions kits that we see out there. We have our modern coil spring assembly in here. And uh, interestingly, we have this plate <laughs> covering the lock mechanism here with these three bolts, which I think is kind of clever. Um, I'm gonna open this up and show you the functionality of this so you can kind of see it, how this works. So there's our half cock position. Bring it back to full cock here. And you can see our fly has dropped down here. Get the angle right. So I can close our frizzen and test the functionality here. And we get some nice spark out of that, which I'm not very familiar with these machine cut flints here that, that came with this, but you know, it's a nice spark. So everything works fine on this lock. Uh, going through it, inspecting the parts, I do notice a little bit here on our sear that we're not engaging the entire sear. There's just a little bit of a corner down here uh, on the outer face of the sear. That's really the most engaged part of it because we can tell that it's bright there. The rest of it is kind of a, a rough surface. Now, I expect this to be a little hard. Um, so I'm gonna take like a sharpening stone, a really fine sharpening stone and see if I can clean that up a little bit and make uh, that sear disengage a little bit smoother. Uh, now that's not something that you have to do uh, by any means. I think, you know, like I showed you here, I'll show you from the front. I think it's working fine. Um, that's more of a, something if you're wanting to, you know, tweak it and mess with your muzzleloader a little bit. So we're gonna drop that back into the stock here. I'm gonna flip the frizzen all the way open. And the nice thing, this lock came with the kit, you know, it came already installed, so it just drops in there nice. There's no real big gaps or anything around here. Um, which is really nice to see. I'm gonna drop my lock bolt washer in and put our lock bolt back in there. I'm always trying my best to make sure that I'm threading that in there first with my hands. That way I can't cross thread and damage anything. Nice and gentle that way. 
Next, primarily, I want to check how my triggers are fitting, and I want to make sure, I mean, they're already inlet, as you can see here, uh, but I want to make sure that there's no interference between the triggers and the lock, because that would take a little bit more work. Right off the bat, I noticed that right here, out at the front of our frizzen, we have a little bit of wood interference there, preventing it from opening and closing real cleanly, so I want to make sure that I'm taking note of that, and I'm going to remove a little bit more wood there so we get a nice uh, clean rotation out of our frizzen. There's a lot of wood that needs to come out of the lock face here, so it's not too big of a deal. So here I'm just kind of pinching the whole trigger plate so that it's fitting in there, taking the lock out to full cock, testing our trigger. And that's working. So that's good, we can move on and, uh, and see what else we can fit. Next, we're going to move on to making sure that the barrel fits into our barrel channel. And to do that, we need to start back here with our barrel tang. And uh, following the instructions here, we have two barrel tang screw holes here that we need to check out. The one in the rear, uh, I popped the trigger plate off here. We just want to make sure that we can see light through both of these holes. Um, and I notice here our front tang bolt is a little uh, clogged, it looks like, with a wood chip. We're going to see what we can do to force that out of there. And I was normally on a, on a muzzleloader or on a more traditional uh, contemporary built muzzle. There we go. The tang bolt will go in and, uh, and actually thread into your trigger plate. Connecting your barrel tang, your barrel through the stock to the trigger plate, kind of clamping that all together. Uh, cleverly, on this kit, they have a nut embedded into the stock here, you can see right there, that our tang bolt threads into. So with our tang, drop that in here, presumably, okay, looks like we need to take our lock out to half cock here. Looks like they're counting on the barrel being in there uh, as part of the uh, keeping the lock stable. So when you're, I think when we're working on this, we don't want to tighten our lock down the whole way. It looks like there's a little bit of inter interference there um, with the barrel. And that's how they're keeping our lock snug to the barrel, um, is using the, using the barrel to kind of stabilize that lock and, and as part of that. So there's our barrel tang dropped in there. We can still see through both of our holes. And drop our front barrel tang bolt in here. Again, just finger threading it, or finger starting it before we get our screwdriver out. Something I like on these kits, especially everybody out there that's building this as their first kit, um, these hook breeches are nice. They allow you to take the barrel out really easily to make sure you've got it clean. Can't tell if that's going in or if it's pushing out my bolt. So I'm backing my bolt out now. It wasn't lined up with our washer in there, so it was actually pushing our washer out which we don't want. So we're gonna back it out and try again. Upon some further inspection here, we need to do a little bit of work uh, with our files here on the stock to get this to fit. What I was finding was this tang bolt was coming in at a little bit of an angle, coming down into the tang bolt nut down there. And we, when we look at this tang as it sits here, we have a bit of a gap back here that I think we can we can work on. I think taking this, the tang back, is going to help us line up that hole. And to back that up, after trying this bolt a few times, I don't know if you can quite see it there on the camera, but you can see there's a lot of wear and kind of black oil marks towards the front of that hole, you know, with the muzzle as the stock lays, backing up that idea that this bolt is in here kind of cattywampus, facing a little bit forward there which is fine, that's not a big deal. So we're gonna put this stock in the vise here and uh, see what we can do to remove some wood. Here you can see looking at it a little bit from the side that our tang is really set forward here a bit. This isn't straight up and down. You can see that gap just right there. We wanna get rid of that gap so that our tang is sitting flush with our stock. 
To do this, I've grabbed the stock in my vise and I have it supported over here, like I uh, talked about in kind of the, the tools of this build video. I'm making sure to grab the stock back here in the wrist. I'm not grabbing it super tight. I don't want to hear any cracking or popping or anything. Just a nice simple grip so that I know that this isn't going anywhere. And as I investigate this, I noticed we have a little bit of a corner of wood down here on the lower side plate side that I believe is preventing our tang and our, uh, our hook breech there from going down flush. So that's what we're going to take out. We're going to be real gentle. We don't need to take out a lot, um, but that's what we're going to start trying to remove. To do this, I have an old flat buck chisel here. We didn't cover this uh, in the tools video, but you can use any straight um, chisel like we talked about. I'm just kind of coming in on each corner just straight down. I'm going to come down again, there we go, and that really cleans up nice there, it's just a leftover I think from when they're machining out your barrel inlet, so you don't really need to do a whole lot, it kind of chips itself out as you're working on it. With these chips, there's a little bit of a gap that looks like goes down in there into our um, trigger plate channel. So we just want to make sure when we're putting our triggers back in that we don't have any wood in there that could interfere. Okay. Drop our tang back in there. So we're still not quite flush, but we are all the way down now into our barrel channel, which is good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just kind of rubbing that tang against the stock and that's going to give us a couple marks in here. Right here you can see where we've been rubbing that uh, our tang has been rubbing against our stock. And if I look at this kind of straight down, it's a little bit hard to see. We still have a little bit of a bump right here. You can really see it because the thickness of this gap here uh, between the I guess the barrel channel and the breech end isn't even all the way across and it gets a lot narrower over here. So we're going to take that same flat chisel, come in straight from the top and just even that up until we get our breech fitting correctly. You can see there, you're pretty much straight on top of it now, we still have a bit of wood exposed at the front of that hole. And that's what I'm talking about. That's throwing that bolt off. So our bolt is going in and then jumping back away from that wood and canting away from what we need. We're going to get a little bit more precise with this. You could use like an inletting black um, if you wanted to, but a lot of times I find just a fat sharpie like this works fine. And we're just going to coat inside of that tang like that and just see where we leave black ink it's going to kind of rub it just straight up and down that's really the only axis i can work in i'll show you here you can see right there that's where we're rubbing not really anything on the other side so we're just going to take a little bit more wood off right there. Just doing a little bit at a time here. I'm taking a couple cuts and then checking my part again because we don't want to go too far. We can never add wood back in. Something to always remember. Each time we get closer and closer. 
and don't let your uh, your eye, I guess, fool you. If you see a, a part that doesn't have black on it but looks like it's sticking out, don't touch it. Don't touch it unless it's got that black mark on there because you just make a mess for yourself. Speaking from experience. I'm going to black my part again just to make sure we're getting good marks. The rear of the tang inlet looks a lot better though. A lot more flush onto the breech anyway. Take off a little bit more. This is the kind of thing you pop on one of your favorite muzzle loading podcasts and just go to town. So I've loosened up my vise here, I checked, and we have all of this fitting together nicely now. I just wanted to show you a little bit of a close-up here of this gap here at the bottom of kind of our barrel and our ramrod inlet there. When we, I'll put up a, in the video here a side-by-side -side comparison of where that was when we started. So you can see where it is now, and that's how much wood we ended up taking off, um, which is a little bit more than I expected, but uh, we have a much better fit now, and our bolt goes all the way through and connects into that tang bolt nut like I'll show you. Our back hole here for our tang is lining up nicely. We also have less of a gap back here um, at the end of our tang, which is which is nice. That was something I kind of noticed early on. Um, but when you see a gap like that, especially early on here, it's not the end of the world because odds are you're going to be uh, removing some wood somewhere else to, to line that back up. So our tang fits in there nicely. You can see there from the tops, nice and flush with the breech end of the stock here. And our bolt snugs up nicely and it's nice that it kind of lines up to be tight so that our bolt line here is in, in, uh, is in line with our barrel channel which is kind of a nice little note we'll talk about later. So now that fits and we can move on to the rest of our dry fitting. Now we're going to move on to setting our barrel into the barrel channel and uh, so we can move on to our tenon wedges here and uh, and that really then we'll be able to move on to the trigger guard and that's really the last of the dry fitting we have to do here. Our butt plate, our toe plate, our nose cap and our entry pipe all come uh, pre-installed which is which is pretty handy. You'll notice here on my barrel I have just a little bit of surface rust. I've oiled the inside of the barrel uh, I'm not too worried about this. We still need to draw file and clean up the barrel anyway. Um, so if your kit comes with a little surface rust, which I don't expect it to, when I first got this, it didn't have any. Um, I think just sitting in the shop it got a little bit. Looks like we need to loosen up our tang a little bit, which is normal. On my other Hawkins, I need to loosen this screw up or this bolt up a little bit. Closer, but no cigar. So I'm just kind of pressing that in very gently, making sure I'm gripping the entirety around the stock here. Checking to see if I've left any marks. I haven't really. Okay. After that initial press fit, we're dropping in there nice. So I'm going to tighten up our tang bolt now. You notice I'm leaving out this back tang screw. I don't really need it um, in there yet. The hole lines up and it's just a screw into the wood. Uh, so I'm just focusing on, on the bolts here. So now I'm going to grab the stock and the barrel in my vise, kind of centering the touch hole in my vise. So I'm clamping down on the tenon, the barrel, and the stock here at a pretty strong point. There. Okay. Now I'm going to visually check here at the tenon wedges and kind of at the nose cap as well to make sure my barrel lines up pretty well um, and make sure I can and to make sure I can see through those holes there and my barrel wedges are a little tight so I'm just test fitting to make sure that my uh, tenon wedges can fit through here they're a little snug I will say this one's a little bit more snug uh, then my front one here. This one I can kind of freely uh, push in and out. This one is a little bit uh, cantankerous, so I'm just going to flip it over here and gently tap it out with the peen end of this small hammer. 
careful to not ding up any of the wood that I don't have to, so I can then grab it out. Just a simple pair of pliers. Okay. Since we know our wedges line up and fit, we can now kind of go into our tenon wedge plates here and make sure that they fit. I didn't have this on the tool list, just a simple little jeweler's hammer here. Really nice for small work like we're doing here because we have this small peen end. So I can just tap that down in there until it's flat and flush. Really, that's a nice inlet there. Everything lines up nice. That just kind of sets down in there. It's not loose. It's not going to fall out, I don't think. Just tap it flush. And this excess wood you see here, we're going to remove all of that so that these plates are nice and flush with the wood. We don't want these you know, nasty edges there catching our fingers every time we pull the rifle up. I'm making sure to install these where we have the little countersink drilled in there in the plate, making sure that's facing out. These are pretty uniform top to bottom too, so as long as we have that face out, I think we're fine. Okay, those fit in nice. So our barrel's not going anywhere now, that's nice. And it's really starting to feel stable, you know, starting to look and feel like a Hawken. I'm going to just be real careful and cognizant of grabbing the barrel and the stock as I'm rotating this around. You could uh, use a strong rubber band or a small clamp out here too. Um, this rifle's pretty short, uh, so I'm not too concerned about it. But that's something to keep in mind if you do leave the barrel in as you're working on the rest of the piece. I like at this stage really to leave the barrel in. It gives me some more length and some more stability as we turn this around here to work on our trigger guard. So I'm lining it up so the front of my trigger guard is, or the trigger guard inlet really, is in the vise and this kind of gives me a nice stable flat platform um, to work on this. I have the rest of the stock supported with the barrel on my rest over here on my bench and we can start uh, doing our final dry fitting here. So we're going to start this by installing our triggers and our trigger plate back into the stock. Uh, you're going to use this long skinny screw. The other screws won't fit. I've tried them all. <laughs> this is the right screw. It's long enough. It indexes the hole right away and we're just going to gently snug this up. We're doing this because we want to make sure our trigger guard is fitting properly the way it's going to fit uh, when everything's assembled. Now. I will say on a lot of these Hawken kits like this one, the trigger guard can be a bugaboo. Um, either the trigger guard doesn't fit the inlet or the inlet doesn't fit the trigger guard. Um, but I'm really pleased to show you here that this one just drops right in, which is really great. It's a pretty tight inlet. Uh, it's not wobbling around or anything. And there's no real major gaps that, um, that I would be displeased with on this. I mean, <laughs> for a, a mass produced kit like this one is, that's... You know, that's pretty great. That's a lot of headache, I think, uh, for new builders out there, just gone. We can adjust our triggers here, or activate our triggers easily. Free range of motion there, so we're ready to move on. That's a, that's pretty simple right there. It's about as good as it gets. Before I go any further here, I'm going to install my touch hole liner. You can see there. Um, this is handy, it's just got a nice little notch in it for our screwdriver, so we can easily put this in and take it out down the road if we need to. Uh, on that note, this is a, a totally optional thing depending on what you're using this kit for. If you're just looking at, you know, hanging this on the wall and just admiring it, uh, you don't need to do this next step here. Uh, it's something I've done now on, uh, on both flintlock kits I put together, is uh, I, I put a little bit of anti-seize onto the threads of my touch hole. I like to, to shoot. <laughs> I like to shoot my muzzle loaders, and uh, this just makes it a little easier, you know, a few years down the road, if and when I, I need to replace that. So again, I didn't really mention that in our tools. This is something just a little extra you can put on here. Help yourself out. Help out future you. Maybe your descendants, your grandkid down the road. Just 
Let's put a little bit of that on there. You don't need much. And again, like everything else, we're just going to start this with our fingers. Make sure we're in line. And install that. I like to install that fairly early just to make sure I'm not getting anything down into, uh, you know, through the, the touch hole there. This kind of keeps keeps the bore and the barrel clean as you're working on these. And, you know, this one's really easy to take back out if we need to down the road. Coming back up here to our barrel tenons, I was going through the um, instructions on these. You want to install these barrel tenons from right to left like we had here. So that right to left, meaning your lock side through to your side plate side um, for your orientation there. Mine, like I said, the second one was a little snug. And um, the instructions say that we can file down uh, that tenon, that wedge a little bit to make it uh, a little bit easier. We don't want these to be loose though, uh, so we'll go over that a little bit later. But if you do start filing on these, uh, be sure that you're checking. You file a little bit, check. Like one or two strokes of your file, come back over and make sure it fits. Because uh, you don't want it to be too loose, then you have to kind of try to bend it and make that work, which we, we don't want to do that. At this point now, our dry fitting is complete. We've gone through and, and checked everything. Everything lines up, everything works. Um, really right now, if I was out in a cabin, you know, uh, being Jeremiah Johnson, I could go take down a Grizzly with the muzzleloader in this state now. But uh, we have a lot of work left to go. Uh, you can see here we have a lot of wood to take down and uh, a lot of matching to do with our hardware here. So uh, as we move forward here, we're going to start uh, going through some different techniques. Altogether, though, getting to this stage on this kit was relatively easy. Uh, we had a little bit of work to do to get our tang to line up okay. Um, but that was, I don't know, maybe half an hour or so of careful back and forth. Not a big deal. And uh, really all part of the fun of building a kit like this one. If it all snapped together and we didn't have to do any work, uh, it wouldn't be nearly as fun. So there you can see everything, you know. Need to attach our barrel rib yet. We're going to do that a little bit later once we get a little bit of a better finish on things here. And uh, really, I hope you stick around for the next part in the series. We're going to start uh, working on that right now. I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.